Grimaldus watched Hellsreach erupting in fury. They came through the morning clouds, fat-bellied trooplanders that streaked with fire from atmospheric entry, and the damage they had sustained breaking through the orbital defenses. Burning hulks juddered as their boosters fired, slowing them before they plowed into the ground. They came from the horizon, or descended from stretches of cloud cover far from the city. Those few that sailed overhead, close enough for the city's defenses to reach, were subjected to horrendous battery fire, destroyed with such swift force that flaming wreckage rained upon the city below. He stood with the command squad, fists resting on the edge of battlements, watching the bulk landers coming down in the northern wastelands. Imperial fighters of all classes and designs flitted between the sedate troopships, unleashing their payloads to minimal effect. The ships were too big for fighter-scale weapons to make any significant difference. As more alien scrapships broke the poison yellow cloud cover, Zeno's fighter craft descended with their motherships. Barasaf and his lightning squadrons engaged these, punching them out of the sky like buzzing insects. Across the city, almost drowned out by the booming rage of the battlement guns, a siren wailed between automated announcements that demanded every soul take up arms and man their appointed positions. The Walls During the opening phase, the defenders of Hellrich would stand upon the city walls and be ready to repel an archaic siege. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers and militia standing vigil on the walls that were as tall as a titan. Several bold orc dropships sought to land in the city. Spire-top platforms, wall guns, and cannon batteries mounted upon the tops of towers annihilated those that made the attempt. The luckier failures managed to climb with enough altitude to escape the city reach and crash on the wastelands. Most were torn apart by unrelenting weapon fire, pulled apart and cast to the ground in flames. Guard units stationed throughout the hive and pre-selected for the duty moved in on the down hulks, slaughtering any alien survivors. Across the city, fire containment teams worked to put out blazes that spread from the crashing junkers. Grimaldus looked along the walls to either side, where thousands of uniformed men stood in loose groups, everyone clad in the ochre of the Armageddon Steel Legion. These were not Saren's own 101st. The colonel's regiment remained at the command center, as well as being spread across the city in platoons to defend key regions. Artarian's words still burned behind the chaplain's eyes. Brothers, he spoke into the Vox. To me. The knights drew closer, Nerovar watching the distant landings without a word. Priamus, his blade already in his hands, resting on one pauldron. Cador, projecting a sense of implacable patience. Bastilon, grim and silent. And Artarian, holding Grimaldus' banner, the only one of them without his helmet. He seemed to enjoy the uncomfortable glances he received from the human soldiers as they saw his shattered face. Occasionally, he would grin at them, baring his metal teeth. Helm on, Grimaldo said, the words emerging from his vocalizer as a low growl. Ardarian complied with a chuckle. We must speak, Grimaldo said. You have chosen a curious moment to realize that, Artarian said. The wall shivered beneath their feet again, as the turrets unleashed another volley at an alien scrap cruiser shaking the sky overhead. The city has awoken to its duty, Grimaldus intoned. It is time I did the same. The knights stood and watched as Zeno's landers touched down upon the plains several kilometers away. Even from this distance, the Templars could make out hordes of greenskins spilling out of the grounded ships, mustering on the wastelands. Reports clashed with each other over the Vox, telling of similar landings being made in the east and west of the city. Speak, Grimaldus demanded in the face of his brother's silence. What would you have us say, Reclusiarch? asked Bastilan. The truth, your perceptions of this doomed crusade and the way it is being led. The orc ship that had passed overhead minutes before now came down in the wasteland with slow, grinding, earth-shaking force. It plowed into the dusty ground, throwing up a trail of dust in its wake, 
and Hellsreach shook to its very foundations. A cheer went up along the wall, thousands of soldiers crying out at the sight. We hold the largest city on the planet, with hundreds of thousands of soldiers, Cador said, as well as countless experienced guard and militia officers, and we have Invigilata. Your point, Grimalda said, watching the crashed ship burn. Do you think that that will be even half of what we need to repel the siege that will soon suffer? No, Cador replied. We are going to die here, but that is not my point. My point, brother, is that the city has a command structure already in place. Bastilan pitched in. You are not a general, Grimaldus, and you are not sent here to be one. Grimaldus nodded, his mind flashing back from the fire on the wastelands snapping into recollections of the endless command staff meetings with the mortals who had requested his presence. He had thought it was his duty to be present, to grasp the full situation facing the hive. When he said these words to his brothers, he was answered with curses and smiles. The chaplain watched the greenskin swarm growing in size, as more landers came down. The alien vessels darkened the sky, such was their number. Like steel beetles, they infested the wastelands in every direction, disgorging more and more hosts of Zeno's warriors. It was my duty to study every soul, every weapon, every meter of this hive. But I have erred, brothers. The High Marshal did not send me here to command. We know, Artarian said softly, his skin tingling at the change in Grimaldus' tone. He sounded almost himself again. Until this moment, until I looked upon the enemy myself, I had not resigned myself to dying here. I was enraged with Helbrecht for damning me to this exile. As were we all, Priama said, his voice rich with the sneer he wore on his face. But we will carve a legend here, Reclusiarch. We will make the High Marshal remember the day he sent us here to die. Good words, Grimaldus thought. Fine words. He will always recall that day. It is not he who must be forced to remember the Hell's Rich Crusade. The chaplain nodded out to the massing army. It is them. Grimaldus looked to the left and then to the right. The Steel Legion stood in organized ranks, watching the mass of enemies coming together on the plains. When his own gaze returned to the foe, he couldn't help a smile creeping its way across his features. This is Grimaldus of the Black Templars, he voxed. Colonel Saron, answer me. I am here, Reclusiarch. Commander Barasav reports. Later, Colonel, later. I am looking at the enemy, tens of thousands, with more landing every moment. They will not wait for their wrecked titans to be landed. These beasts are hungry for bloodshed. The first strike will come at the northern wall, within the next two hours. With respect, Reclusiarch, how will they reach the wall without titans to breach it? Propulsion packs to gain the battlements, ladders to climb, artillery to pound holes in the walls. They will do whatever they can, and as soon as they are able. These creatures have been imprisoned on bulk ships for weeks, and in some cases months. Do not expect sense. Expect madness and rage. Uh, understood. I will have Barasav squadrons ready for bombing runs on enemy artillery. I would have suggested the same, Colonel. The gates, Saren. We must watch the gates. A wall is only as strong as the weakest point, and they will come at the northern gate with all that they have. Reinforcements are already being routed to... No. Pardon me? You heard me. I will not require reinforcement. I have fifteen of my knights with me, and an entire Steel Legion regiment. I will provide updates as the situation evolves. Grimalda skilled of Oxlink before Saren could argue any more. The Templar watched the enemy massing in the distance for several more minutes, listening to the chatter of the guard soldiers nearby. The men around him were the insignia of the 273rd Steel Legion. Their shoulder badges showed a black carrion bird, clutching the aquila in its claws. 
The reclusiarch closed his eyes, recalling the personnel data meetings he'd endured. The 273rd, the Desert Vultures. Their commanding officer was Colonel F. Nathat. His second officers were Major K. Johan and Major V. Oros. In the distance, a great cry was raised. It barely reached the defender's ears over the powerful refrain of wall guns firing, but it was there nevertheless. Thousands upon thousands of orcs bellowing their racial war cry. They were charging. Charging alongside grumbling, rickety vehicles, troop carriers stolen from the Imperium, and subsequently junked in the spirit of alien improvement. Growling tanks that already lobbed shells that fell far short of the city wall. Even great beasts of burden, the size of scout titans, with scrap metal howdahs on their rocking backs, filled with howling orcs. We have 16 minutes before they reach the range of the wall guns, Nerovar said. 22 before they reach the gates, if their rate of advance remains unaltered. Grimaldus opened his eyes and took a breath. The humans were muttering among themselves, and even though they were trained veterans, Grimaldus' senses could send the reek of sudden sweat and fierce soured breath among their respirators. No mortal could fail to be moved by the horde of devastation rumbling their way. Even without their greater war machines, the first of the orc assaults was vast. The city was ready. The enemy was coming. It was time to face up to why he was exiled here. Grimaldus took a step onto the battlements. The wind was strong. An atmospheric disturbance from so many heavy craft making planetfall. But despite the powerful gale that whipped the greatcoats of the human soldiers, Grimaldus remained steady. He walked along the edge of the wall, his weapons drawn and activated. The generator coils on the back of his plasma pistol burned with fierce light, and the crozier's mole sparked with lethal force. As he moved, the eyes of the soldiers followed him. The wind tore at his tabard and the parchment scrolls fastened to his armor. He paid no heed to the anger of the elements. Do you see that? he asked quietly. At first, only silence followed. Hesitantly, the guard soldiers began to cast glances to each other, uncomfortable with the chaplain's presence and confused by his behavior. All eyes were on him now. Grimaldus aimed his mace out at the advancing horde. Thousands, tens of thousands, and that was only the beginning. Do you see that? he roared at the humans. The closest ranks flinched back from the mechanical bark issuing almost deafeningly loud out of his skull helm. Answer me! He received several trembling nods. Uh, yes, sir, uttered a handful of them, the speakers faceless within the masses behind their rebreather masks. Grimaldus turned back to the wasteland, already dark with the teeming chaotic ranks of the enemy. At first, his helm emitted a low, vox-distorted chuckle. Within a few seconds, he was laughing, laughing up at the burning sky while aiming the crozier's hammer at the enemy. Are you as insulted as I am? This is what they send against us. He turned back to the men, the laughter fading, but amused contempt filling his voice even through the inhumanizing vocalizers of the helm. This is what they send? This rabble? We hold one of the mightiest cities on the face of the planet. The fury of its guns sends all skyborne enemies to the ground in flames. We stand united in our thousands, our weapons without number, our purity without question, and our hearts beating courage in our blood. And this is how they attack us. Brothers and sisters, a legion of beggars and alien dregs wheezes its way across the plains. Forgive me when the moment comes that they must whine and weep against our walls. Forgive me that I must order you to waste your ammunition upon their worthless bodies. Grimaldus paused, lowering the weapon at last, turning his back on the invaders as if bored by their very existence. His entire attention was focused upon the soldiers below him. I have heard many souls speak my name in whisper since I came to Hell's Reach. I ask you now, do you know me? Yes, 
Several voices replied, several among the hundreds. Do you know me? He bellowed at them over the firing of the wall guns. Yes, a chorus answered now. I am Grimaldus of the Black Templars, a brother to the steel legions of this defiant world. A muted cheer greeted his words. It was not enough, not even close. Never again in life will your actions carry such consequence. Never again will you serve as you serve now. No duty will matter this much, and no glory will taste as true. We are the defenders of Hell's Reach. On this day, we carve our legend in the flesh of every alien that we slay. Will you stand with me? Now the cheers came in truth. They thundered in the air around him. Will you stand with me? Again a roar. Sons and daughters of the Imperium, our blood is the blood of heroes and martyrs. The Xenos dare defile our city. They dare tread the sacred soil of our world. We will throw their bodies from these very walls when the final day dawns. A wave of noise crashed against his armor as they cheered. Grimaldus raised his war maul, aiming it at the embattled heavens. This is our city. This is our world. Say it. Say it. Cry it out so the bastards in orbit can hear our fury. Our city. Our world. Our city. Our world. Laughing again, Grimaldus turned to face the oncoming horde. Run, you alien dogs. Come to me. Come to all of us. Come and die in blood and fire. Blood and fire! The reclusiar cut ear with his crozius, as if ordering the men forward. For the Templars! For the Steel Legion! For Hell's Rage! For Hell's Rage! Louder! For Hell's Rage! They cannot hear you, brothers! For Hell's Rage! Hurl yourselves at these walls, you inhuman filth! Die on our blades! I am Grimaldus of the Black Templars, and I will cast your carcasses from these holy walls! Grimaldus! 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 Grimaldus nodded, still staring out over the wasteland, letting the cheering chant mix with the howling wind, knowing that it would carry to the advancing enemy.